this video we're going to discuss the 3370 dollar bill timer box by coin mechanism. Do you need to turn on an electrical device for a fixed amount of time and charge money for the use of that device? This timer box design has been around and has been popular with kitty rides for many many years and it's also used in applications such as pay showers, tanning beds, massage chairs, heaters for warming centers, and multimedia applications. This timer box is constructed from heavy duty 16 gauge steel and it's covered with a scratch resistant baked on powder coated paint in a silver vein textured color. The box is designed to be mounted to a flat surface using four existing holes in the corners of the panel door. There are also holes provided to route wires through this panel door. For added security, the timer box comes standard with a round key barrel lock instead of the conventional flat key locks that are found in other devices. This lock is coupled to a double sided cam that mates to two locking surfaces instead of one that are inside the timer box. A full length piano hinge door and overlapping door edges complements this vandal proof design. Generously rounded corners of this timer box make it aesthetically pleasing as well as ergonomically safe with no sharp edges or corners. This box is available in different denominations. You can get it in one, five, tens, and twenty dollar uh, denominations in US, but it's also available in foreign currency also. The box can handle up to 100 bills that fall inside the box. There is no stacker in here because there's there no stacker but all the bills fall to the bottom of the box. Here's where the bills are. The bills land down over here. This is the timer device itself. This is a counter that registers every time a vend occurs or a dollar bill is put in this registers a count for a dollar. The timer can be set for to, to set to start vend anywhere between one and seven bills. That starts the vend process. However, you can add more time onto your application by just inserting the bill after the vend has started. So this timer can accept additional money after the vend has started. So even though you start the vend process anywhere from one to seven dollars keep adding money and it incrementally adds time onto that into that count. The timer itself also has dip switches for setting the, the amount of time that you want to, to bend something. Each, each dip switch has a different amount of time and you can calculate your total time because the time that you set on the dip switches is per dollar. So you figure out how much you want to charge, what the total length of time is, and then you can calculate out what what amount of time you want to set on your dip switch. What we have here is the timer set up and I have a little light set up here to simulate your device that you're turning on. And we have the timer set for one dollar and five seconds and I'm going to put a one dollar bill in. And you can see the, your device turning on for five seconds. The counter here increments every time a bill is inserted. Here the counter clicks, so every time a bill is inserted, the timer, the counter clicks. So that way you can keep track of the number of bills that have been accepted by the device. The US version comes standard with a 120 volt AC operation. To hook up the timer box, this particular timer box operates off of 120 volts AC. It's pretty simple. You need your main constant power wires to, to operate the timer box. That's basically your, your hot, your neutral, and a ground, an earth ground for safety. Uh, the, the ground wire is the green wire here, and that is typically tied, I mean that's tied internally from our timer box to the chassis ground. The white wire is a neutral wire. That white wire should be common to the device that you're turning on. The black wire coming in is the constant 120 volts AC 
that is powering the, the timer itself. So these first three wires, the green, the white, and the black, are just your standard, constant 120 volts AC coming from your wall. What we do is when the timer turns on, we switch the hot leg, the, the black hot leg, we switch it back out via this red wire, and it's this red hot wire that goes back to the device you want to turn on. So the red leg is the hot wire that is turning on your device. Again, it should be common with the uh, neutral side of your device also. You can either do that internally here or you can do it outside of this box also. I want to talk about an alternate way of using this timer and what I have here is a unwired timer sitting above one that's all wired up. We normally route the power that's being used to operate the timer a common terminal on the relay uh, of the timer and then we take that, that common power and it gets switched out of the normally open contact of this relay back out to your device. However, you don't have to use the same power coming in to be switched. If you want to use this relay, you can use this relay as purely a dry contact relay. And you can hook up whatever you want between this common terminal and the normally open terminal and at the time of VIN these two terminals here and here will short out during the VIN cycle. You can use that as just a, uh, a pure switch if you want. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful of is that whatever you're hooking up between these two terminals does not exceed 20 amps because these terminals have a contact rating of 20 amps. So. You don't have to switch the same power that's being operated from the timer. You can ask for a dry contact version and you can just use these two terminals to act as a switch for your application. If after viewing this video you have additional questions, you can contact us at the phone number listed here or visit our website.